I, I, I'm going to have to rely on my memories. She got to know the Lord in 1977. Wonderful. She was born in Op House. She first was born and then she got saved. Okay, so, so. <laughs> now, Op House, who knows where Op House is? Wow. Well, yeah. They say they can't take an aerial photo of Op House because it's underneath a tree. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it's somewhere there in the States as well. Uh, good quality comes from Christy, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In 87, the Lord called Gerda into full-time ministry, started Herald Ministries. And um, most of this is under the auspices of Herald Ministries. And we're excited that uh, he called Gerda into this whole, um, let's call it ministry of research. And like Gerda said to me, when she started, there was nobody to teach her. And that's actually wonderful. Then you get taught by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. And that was great. So Gerda, it's such a privilege to have you. Uh, this is a once-off conference. Uh, that we're going to have. Everything will be taped, but I don't think we will have the same type of gathering again. So it's a privilege to have you here, and may the Lord bless you. This is my pastor, Marnu Bosov. And, and, and one is really, uh, I'm as a person really blessed to have him as my pastor. He grew up before me. I went to all his times when he started to court beer. So I know him very well. And today is my pastor to whom I submit the ministry and everything, and I ask him to pray for me for, uh, tonight and to just start the conference and set us free in the name of Jesus, to do what we have to do. Wonderful. Yes, I think it's a privilege for us just to be here tonight also as uh, sort of working with Tani Gerda uh, and in the ministry. This is for us a great privilege. I think if there's one person I've seen over the years that understands something about submission in the really positive sense of the word, it's, 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 it's Gerda. She just always, when she goes anywhere in the world, she says, I need your covering, I need prayer, I need people to stand with me in the Spirit. And she, uh, just to see myself standing, I mean, there's at least 50 years age difference between us. Excuse If you, if you can't see that. Uh, I'm only 24 now, so that's, <laughs> just kidding. And, um, but, but she doesn't have an issue with, with age or with anything like that. She's just always been open to that. And I think this conference, um, thank you for all those that really felt strongly that this is a time for a conference to be, to be arranged like this because I think uh, we need the impartation of the people like Tony Harry who has walked this road for many years, has done the research, who has just really prayed in in many nations, many places in the world, and in South Africa, so many places. So it's, it's important to have something of that unction, of that anointing, of that vision, and of that knowledge to be imparted to a next generation, to more people. And I think we're blessed. There's so many people I see in the room here tonight. Um, it's, uh, I'm just humbled to see so many of the, of the people here, just the few that I know that has been around the world and has done tremendous things for God in places in the world. So... This is a room packed with, with power and Hallelujah. potential. So I'm excited about what's going to happen. If I could just share one thing also. I think also when I saw Fuad here just this now from Morocco, he's one of our missionaries there. And um, we have, I spoke to another guy who's also been working in North Africa, and he sort of summed up something that was what, what, what Blackie was saying as we started about times of change. That About a year ago, they asked this other friend of mine if he would consider to become the regional head of YWAM in the whole of North Africa. And he said, then they went and prayed, him and his wife, and they said, God, is this what you have for us? And he said, the Lord clearly said to them, no, go back to South Africa for a year. And it was middle last year. And he said, and, and the words came clearly to him. He said, when you come back, everything will be different. Everything. He said, they didn't know what's going to happen. And the Lord then said to them one or two ex, ex, uh, more things. He said, the one word that was in the field was, enough is enough. Amen. That was the one word God clearly spoke to them. He said, and when you go back, it will not be business as usual. It will not be business as usual. Not knowing what's about to happen six months from there. And so the world is busy turning upside down. Mm. We see great things happening. And in times like this, the opportunity for the gospel and the opportunity for the kingdom is just increasing. And I think that's why I'm so excited right now. I think it's just such a time for all the missions organizations, for people wanting to have a hard passion for nations mm -hmm. to say, it's almost like we're all taking sort of a step back to say, what is busy happening? But this is a time for prayer. It's been all these nations in such Amen. a case where you struggle to, to maybe get in at, at the moment because of all the war. 
this is the time for prayer. This is the time where God is just preparing the, the, the land more than ever before. And I think we are living in a time where we have seen all these massive prayer initiatives from the 1990s, the praying for the window, through the window, everything about the window. <laughs> the window is opening. There's Amen. definitely a window clearly opening. Amen. And I think this is such exciting times to see what God is doing. Amen. So I'm just privileged to pray tonight for Tony Gerda and for this conference. Let's just pray. Father, thank you that we just so privileged, Lord, to be your servants in this time. You are the God of the heavens. You are the God of the earth. You are God of everything, Lord. You have nations in your hand. You have kings and kingdoms in your hand. We declare that tonight, that you are the almighty one. Lord, we pray for this conference, that this conference will shake the heavens. Amen. That this conference will change Amen. nations. Amen. That out of this conference, Lord, people will go and pray and see earthly kingdoms come just totally falling apart. Mm. And that we will see the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ established on this Amen. earth. Amen. Lord, we pray for Gerda. We pray for clarity. We Amen. pray for just a clear mind. We pray for her to impart your vision, your mm. knowledge, and just the anointing of the Holy Spirit to flow over us, Lord. Thank you also for Elizabeth and anybody else who's going to be sharing over the next couple of days. We pray, Lord, that the power of your Holy Spirit will be here to impart to us knowledge and impart to us wisdom and power. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for this conference. We bless it and we open it in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. our one and only Savior, the only name given under heaven by which man can be saved. And, Lord, we honor you for that and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise. My brothers and sisters, I, I know that the first evening is always the evening where you want, want to thank people, and I also want to do that. I want to first of all thank my husband, he's standing right there at the back behind the camera, for always releasing me in all the directions God wants me to go. And we've been, this year we've been married for 41 years, and he is such an awesome, such an awesome privilege. Donkey lovey, thanks. And then I want to thank my secretary sitting right, right at the back, Natasha, for everything that she did over the past two and a half months. We really worked like Trojans, I'm telling you. We, and there's a lot of preparation. And thank Natasha that you always were there for me. Through my moods and through everything, <laughs> praise God for a person like that. And then I want to thank Leon and Elizabeth, my very, very close associates when it comes to spiritual mapping, for what I've learned from them. And you'll see how God has been bonding us together over a long time to help one another and to learn from one another. And I'm so really proud on, of my son, Leon. I see him as my son for what God has taught him and what good teacher he's turned out to be. And I praise the Lord that they can share, that they can all share together in this time. Now, I'm going to just get my... Thing organized here. Okay. Praise the year. <laughs> I just want to do, say another thing. I want to thank all those people coming from America and Canada and all over. I mean, I'm totally, gee, I'm so blessed to think that so people came from so far, from Morocco, Botswana, my good friend, friend Pietrus is always following us all over. It's amazing that you've come and I really hope that you'll be able to learn something. But I have to pray first. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we want to thank you again for tonight, for this whole week. Father, I just pray that you will enable us by your Holy Spirit to teach properly, to teach what is on your heart. And Father, I'm praying that you will bring in an anointing on the teaching tonight, Father, that no man will speak, but that the Spirit of God will speak. I ask that you will remind me of the things that you want me to say, my Father, even scripture verses that you want to bring in or whatever, just lead me by your spirit, step by step, step, Lord. I cannot do it without you. And I just pray that you'll come in a mighty way to give us an anointing, Father, to help my brothers and sisters so that they can change the areas in which they live by the leading of the Holy Spirit and for, through research and yes, informed prayers. I pray that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, tonight I'm going to start with a question. Who is God and what is my position in Him? 
and who are you in Christ? You know, I have found over the years that many people do not know who they are in Christ. And it's important, especially when it comes to research, that you will stay in him all the time. Because in research, you can be sidetracked so easily by fascination. And you must always say to yourself, am I doing this because of fascination? Or am I doing this because of revelation? And by the grace of God, what we're going to teach you has been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. And we want to honor the Lord for that. So tonight I'm going to ask this question, who is God and what is my position in him? And I just saw this amazing slide. Somebody sent it to me. And, oh, near my, you see? Love you, a second now. Go on, take this. You know, sorry. Give it my help, Buddha. Don't go away. See, I never work with this thing like this. Okay, no on. Oh, I say. Well, okay, donkey. Let's start again. Flop one. Okay, let me be professional now. The first teaching tonight is called, Who is God and what is my position in Him? And I've seen over the years that many people do not know who they are in God. That's why they always speak about demons all the time. Now, there's a demon behind every bush. And that's true. There is a demon about, uh, around every bush. But where are you? You're not behind the bush. You're in the heavens. Amen? In Jesus. So it's important that you and I know who we are. So when I saw this, it just spoke to my spirit. This mighty God, such a mighty God. And he is going to teach us how he made the heavens and what's going on in the heavens so that we know how to fight intelligently. So that we will let, be led by the Spirit through research that we will know how to pray. My brothers and sisters, so the f- first uh, psalm that I want you to pray for yourself tonight is Psalm 43 verse 3. And it's an amazing scripture. It says, Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. And I want you two, two together to pray this. To say, Father, send your light into this conference so that we know, Father, how we can come into your truth so that we can come to your holy hill and worship you from your, from your tab- tabernacle. And I know we are the tabernacle of God, but sometimes we look at the things around us, happening around us, we think, gee, what are we going to do? Where are we? What's happening to us? Must, must I immigrate to the United States or to Australia? Where am I? But when we know we are in Christ, God comes and gives us a light, and we know how to move in Him. Now, some of the basic principles when we talk about these things is who is God. That's why I want you to pray the Scripture. Who is God? And and some of of the uh, basic principles is that God has never changed. He will send His light to you as He sent it to David. Amen. Amen. So we can say, Father, you are the same God. You are the same God, the Old and the New Testament, because sometimes people say to you, but you know, that was in the Old Testament. You can't apply it. Now, if we speak that way, then we really have two gods. And we must see that the God of the Old Testament and the New Testament are the same God. Otherwise, we are worshiping two gods. So he's unchanged. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And my brothers and sisters, these principles that he had in the Old Testament is still the same, and he's applying them in the New Testament. So I want you to pray for one another, Psalm 43, verse 3. Send your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Don't let us be led by people, Lord, but by your light and your truth. Let's pray two, two together. Let's do it quickly. Pray, you can pray out loud, you can pray in Afrikaans, whatever language. In the name of Jesus. Oh, 
Amen and amen. So we have just asked God to see into truth and light, so we will be led by truth and light. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, now the big question that we want to answer is who is God? And I've just written some stuff down because I was teaching in Germany at, in a Lutheran church and the pastor came to me and he said, don't you want to teach my congregation who God is? And I said, oh my word, how can you really teach a congregation on who God is? And then I started to write some things down. I mean, it's only a few, a few of a magnitude. So we must just remember this thing, and I've alluded to it already, that we have the same God. God is still the same. In the Old Testament, he, used, was, uh, he operated in certain ways, and he will do exactly the same in the New Testament too. That's why we can go and look at, oh, at warfare, for instance, how it was done in the Old Testament, and we can apply it in our situations today because the spiritual realm doesn't really change much unless you pray. Amen. So otherwise, we would have had two gods. And then God is totally unchanged. He doesn't change. He's the same today and yesterday. Praise God. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Now it's important. The idols of the old antique world were his enemies. They were really his enemies. And they are still the enemies today of God. You don't have to write this down. This is all in your notes. You can write down later when I just show you sketches. You, because I must move quickly. And in the scriptures, especially in, in 2 Corinthians 8 and 2 Corinthians 10, and you must really read it, he says that those who worship demons, are idols worship demons. So everybody who's worshiping an idol is worshiping a demon. And that is a principle that we work with even in, in research. The Lord hates witchcraft and divination, and he hates rebellion against him. When people serve demigods, and I'll show you some demigods tonight. How of, however, today we often are led by what we call in German a zeitgeist. In other words, it's the spirit of the time. And if I would ask you tonight, what is the spirit of the time we live in today? What would you say? Just shout from the awesome. What? Secularism. You can, humanism. In, uh, materialism. You see, and this whole thing of imperialism, I must always rule. So there are many spirits that today can really influence us in some way or other. But we must be only led, as you would all know, by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we are bewitched by humanism, and we sometimes fall into the slot of humanism. And that's the one we must watch out for. You know that... That we, everybody must have everything. Everybody must have a Mercedes Benz and everybody must have this and that and the other. That is, that's never been like that. It will never be like that. We are bewitched by what people say. We cannot discern the spiritual realm. We don't know what's going on in the spiritual realm because we are too scared to stand up and say, enough is enough. In Afrikaans you say, genoeg is genoeg. And I want Americans to learn that. Genoeg is genoeg. You can say it in German too, genug is genug, but I'll tell you what, genug is genug, enough is enough. We need to, uh, to discern what's going on in the spirit, but we must never compromise. And you will not compromise when you have the knowledge of the word. And the word says explicitly to us, my people die because of a lack of knowledge. You all know that scripture from Hosea. But the other one says, and that's in the main scripture in Isaiah 5, 13, where it says, my people go into captivity because they do not have knowledge. So knowledge is important for the Lord and for us. Now you and I are standing in front of this huge question mark. We see a world burning. Blackie spoke about it tonight. The whole world is changing. It's as if the world is upside down. So here I'm standing, looking at everything around me, and then I see another question mark, and I got this from the Bild this week, there's another question mark. 
Uncle Julius is there, and we've got the Nazis on this side. People are dying. So we ask ourselves, where are we going to? What's happening to us? But God, in his wonderful wisdom, sent a cross. His son to die on a cross so that you and I can be free and hear what he's saying to us. And for a practical application now, for a few minutes, and I know Blackie is watching the time at the back, but for two minutes, I want you to think about your position in Christ. What are you in Christ? How do you see yourself? Or do you think you're a grasshopper? Remember Numbers 13? The army that went with Joshua said, we are like grasshoppers in their eyes. They even think about us as grasshoppers. I don't know who told them that because it was never said. They just made the assumption we are like grasshoppers. But I am not a grasshopper. I will hop and hop on other things, but I'm not a grasshopper. So we must know what we are, are in Jesus. Now, positioning yourself in Christ, my brothers and sisters, and I want to take you quickly because the time is against us. We have to know daily who we are. And I want to give you a tip to position yourself. Take the book of Ephesians and just take the first chapter. And underline every word you've, uh, or little phrase you find in him, through him. I was chosen in him before the world was even created. So that you can say to yourself, Hera, this is what you are in Jesus. This is what he says about you. And when you speak the word, this entrance of this word will give you light. Now, I've put it here and you all know it, that you joined heirs with Jesus but it's important to speak to yourself and look in, the, in, the, in your mirror and say, this is what you are in Christ. You are not a grasshopper. You are, you have been cre- chosen in him before the foundation of the earth. So get up and stand up straight. Because in research we need that. Because you sometimes get so, I can say, drawn under because of all the negative things you see and all the things that you read that you must get up and just say, who am I in Christ? Who am I? And speak to yourself and say, get up, stand up straight. You are a king, a priest, a prophet. So stand up. We have to do that, my brothers and sisters. But now it's amazing that the Lord says to us in Galatians 1, that he called Jesus from his mother's womb and called me through his grace. The more you say it, the more you remember it. That's why it's in your notes. That I might preach him among the Gentiles. And I'm so glad I've got a brother here from Morocco and other people comes from mission backgrounds. It was God separated us to speak the gospel to people, but even preach to them in the spirit. And I'll show you quickly how that works. You know, I often go overseas by the grace of God. And then you come into a country like Sardinia. It's a small little island. Before I even was invited there, I didn't even know where they, they really existed. And when they invited me, then I clicked, but I had to look where it was. And then I saw that this place was so full of idols. It's unreal in that small little place. And I said, Lord Jesus, I'm glad that you are going to reveal your son, even to these people, who you really are. And when we speak it in the spiritual realm, what will happen? The demons will tremble. Because it's the truth of God that's been spoken. Amen. And that has got a lot to do with research. What you say over a place when you go there. If God has given you a word, speak it. And tonight, Mano didn't even quote that word. But in 1980, God gave us a word for Pretoria. In 1980, it was in the high days of apartheid. And he gave us Jeremiah 37. Verse 7, 8, and 9, and I know it just, of, uh, I've prayed it so often. It says, and this city will bring me renown throughout the nations of the world because of the good things I do to, to it and the peace and the prosperity in the city. And my brothers and sisters, during the time of the violence in 1986, we prayed that scripture when there was some kind of violence going on in Mama Lordi. We will send the prayer team up into the mountain. They will just speak this word, and the whole violence will subside. So God wants to reveal his son through his prophetic word that we speak over an area. So it's important for you, doesn't matter where you come from, what is God saying about the place where you're living? Amen. Now, I want to show you how I understand our position. 
Uh, and it's important that we come to a place where we remember this funny green egg. Because I had my all, everything redone, or well, not everything, but many of my uh, transparencies I had done, or my slides redone. So I want to show you what happens. Here are you before you were saved. You sat in the kingdom of darkness and you were under the power of Satan. That's what the word says. But as soon as you got saved, you were loosened from your bondage and you made a kingdom switch. So you moved from one kingdom into another kingdom, into a kingdom with totally new principles. And then once you come out of this kingdom of darkness, you put on the armor of light and you move into a new position in Jesus. Far above all principalities and powers, and you're sitting together with him, above principalities and powers. Amen. And then we start, when, once we understand that, we can rule and reign with him over everything below us and our feet, because we have been translated from darkness into light. Now, if you read... The, the life of the Lord Jesus very carefully. Now, this is the wrong slide. Sorry. Yeah. That's right. He says who he is, what he is, and what his mission in life is. So you must say to yourself every morning, what am I? Where am I going to? What is my mission in life? And what is, what, what does, is he saying to me for this day? You know, it's wonderful that Jesus said, the Father is in me and I in him. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that he himself doeth. Sorry for my high King James, but that's my program. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. God will show us greater things. And I've seen in research how God has shown us things by waiting on the Holy Spirit after we've read through the uh, different research that the Lord led us to do. What God revealed to us. I want to give you an example last year. When I was in Sardinia, God spoke to us very clearly. We were waiting on the Lord, <clears throat> and there was a lady from Rome. And she sat and she said, God says, we must go and do repentance at the places where children were sacrificed in Sardinia. Nobody's even heard of that before. So we got into Google, praise God for Google, and into the internet, and we found out exactly where the Phoenicians sacrifice children. And the blood of these dead children was still screaming up to the Lord. So we could take a prayer team to all these different places. They were mostly harbors. And there we repented because of the sin, this sin of blood on the land. And something amazing happened. You know, my friend in Sardinia has got a small evangelical church amidst a whole, yeah, uh, I mean, outnumbered by the Catholics totally in that island. And he said to me after, and they were here in February, he said after we did that action, suddenly his church started growing and people started to come to the Lord. Miraculously, people just started to come to the Lord. I mean, this is to me a sign that when you remove certain oppressions, then the light can come through. Praise the Lord. Now, my brothers and sisters, let me just say, go on. This is our position in Jesus. <clears throat> you must pray for my voice that my voice doesn't go, please. Once we come to Jesus, as I've just shown you, we move in this position into him, and we are now an ambassador of the light, and we belong to a royal priesthood and a holy nation. A royal priesthood means that we can be before the Lord and worshiping all the time, but we are also kings and prophets. So if you're a king, you rule. Amen. You don't let things rule over you. You rule over things. Amen. But the Lord comes and he says to us very explicitly, we must, when we're in this position and we've made this kingdom switch, we must now speak life, light, love, and we must be the salt and we must speak truth. And what does it mean to be salt? It, I believe it's something like this, that you come to a person who's standing alone at a conference, not speaking to anybody. You just go and be salt to them too and give them a hug. That is salt, to make things tastier around you. Amen. 
But then the Lord shows us very explicitly that there's a big fight going on in this mid-heaven area. This is the place where the, everything is controlled from, from where the devil is sitting, the false bride is sitting, and he accuses people and he's reigning over people on earth. And you and I are the only people that can take all the curses and all the stuff that happens on earth. Are we are the only people to take that away so that people's eyes can be opened so that can come to Jesus. But I want to show you something. This false bride is very prominent more and more. I'll show you some slides just now. It's an international dominion of demonically inspired, perverted minds. It sounds like a one big mouth, for, I'll say it again. It's an international dominion which is demonically inspired. And this international dominion was caused by a perverted way of thinking that people didn't want to submit themselves to God. So we must see that or be conscious of the fact that we must be in him all the time. Are we always there? No. Sometimes I feel I'm not there. What do you do? You speak to yourself, you pray, go into your office or where you pray and say, Lord, help me. I want to come into this position in you. I know I'm there, but I want to know I'm there. So I'm proclaiming scripture. I'm speaking scripture over this situation, whatever situation. I'm praying for Julius Malema that he will come to the Lord Jesus. And I'll show you just, just now how we can do that. Now, once we're there in that position, the Lord gives us a warning. See, don't give the devil a foothold. My brothers and sisters in research, it's so important. I like when we did the whole um, uh, uh, research on apartheid and how it came to be in 1854, really. It was already started by Andres Petuarius, and uh, because of fear, because of the impies being sent to the farmers and killing them off, he started with this whole thing of, well, that he called, uh, he didn't call it apartheid, but my, my uh, policy of segregation. And once we saw that, I mean, you as an African and me, I thought, oh, no, it, can't, it couldn't be us. You know, we couldn't do something so terrible. But then the Holy Spirit comes in his grace and you say, Father, I want to intercede for this. I want to stand in for my nation. And I want to ask you through identification repentance to forgive us. We were dumb, Lord. We were dumb to be like that. After the Boer War that we hated the English so much. I mean, I, I, grew, I grew up in a surrounding like that. Where people, my great-grandmother still spoke about the concentration camps. And I don't know where she is when she died. I don't know where she went to, but I can't judge her. But she had this terrible hatred that she always carried with her. Praise God we are free from that. Isn't that my, let's give you all a clap for that. Because that's a miracle. That the Lord took us from this hate of English. And today I can teach in English praise the year, and my one, our one daughter lives in England, so I get there often, and I love London. But you see, God must remove things from our hearts so that we can be more and more like Jesus. Amen? And as a researcher, you have to become more and more like Jesus because you're confronted with facts all the time. So many farmers have been murdered. So many children have been uh, 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 disgraced or whatever. So you have to be on your marks all the time to know who you are in Jesus. My brothers and sisters, and then the Lord comes, and um, let me just go on to the next slide. Oh, no, what is it now? It's not in show. Can I just go on? Click, what? We must click. We need click there. Oh, thanks. Shows you I'm not perfect yet. Hallelujah. But my brothers and sisters, once you're saved, it's important that you know what God is wanting from you. 1 Timothy 1.18 is an amazing scripture. I love that scripture. Where Paul came and he spoke to Timothy and he said to him, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. So in research, you must also know what is God expecting from me. Am I a prayer for the researchers because they need prayers? Am I a real researcher? Or am I 
a scratch researcher. I'm more a scratch researcher. I scratch over things, and I, then I find things out, and then I tell Elizabeth, and she goes deeper, hallelujah. And then she can teach me again. See, you must know where your place is. So when I go into a country where I have to go and teach, I scratch first. Sometimes God takes me deeper into some of the history, like in Germany. I did a whole study on the philosophies of the German people because I wanted to understand why they rejected God after God started the Reformation there in the 1500s. What happened to them? Why were they bewitched? Where is the Lutheran church today in Germany? So I, when you know this, then you can start praying intelligent and ask the Holy Spirit how to bring them back on that way. I don't know if any of you have seen the film called Luther. Did you see it, Luther? Whom of you saw it? That was an amazing film. I saw it twice, and every time I just cried my heart out. To see people in Augsburg, it was in Augsburg in Germany, who were prepared to lay down their lives, not to lose their Bibles. And all of them came from Sachsen. It's one of the provinces of Germany. And today, the Lord is moving in that province. It's amazing. And I believe it's because of what they did, that they took a stand for the word that God is still honoring that. Now, this is a warning for, to the saved person. Now, my brothers and sisters, God must warn us sometimes because Satan wants to take an advantage over us at times. So we need to look at this. Keep Satan from getting an advantage over you. How can he get an advantage over you? It's by allowing him certain, uh, that certain things will happen in your life to you. By allowing him to say, ah, oh, I can't understand this. I have to prepare so much for this conference. Oh, I haven't got the time. And ah, oh, no, uh, sorry for the foreigners, but ah oh, is a word that you must really learn. Because ah oh, just means I just can't do it. But you must learn the guttural first. You must first go, <coughs> and then you can say that. <coughs> I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> and the Lord must help us that our minds are not corrupted. You know, when I uh, read the newspaper every day, your mind can get corrupt and say, oh, Lord, mustn't I go and live in London with my daughter? Father, mustn't I tell my other two children we must leave because there's no hope for us any longer? The whole of Africa is falling to pieces. Nonsense. God's got a plan for Africa. God's got a plan for America. Hallelujah. God's got a plan for every one of us from Morocco. God has got a plan for every country and province represented here. We mustn't get our minds corrupted. In this city, I've seen how one word worked for a whole city to bring the whole uh, thing of crime down, uh, crime and the violence at the time of 1986, especially. Get, do not get bewitched. Don't, do not get bewitched. Do not obey the truth. As when you get, are bewitched, so things like this happen to you. Think to yourself, you know, this is in the newspaper today, what my stars foretell. Let me just have a quick peep. To see just for the joke, just for the joke. You just let's look at my stars. You know, when you start doing that and things happen in the way that it was foretold in the stars, next day you will read it again and the next day you will read it even more. And you'll get bewitched because you're not obeying the truth of God. And in research, it's important that we see the truth of God as the main thing. What is God saying about Pretoria? He gave us a word for Pretoria. What does the Lord say about Bloemfontein, about Cape Town? And keep your eyes on the word of the Lord so that you don't give the devil a foothold. Amen. To think negatively, to speak negative words and not God-given words. The next one is watch out for temptation. Really watch out for temptation. It comes in various ways. And I'm not going to teach you on that. You know what I'm talking about. Never turn aside from the truth. When God has said it, that settles it and I will obey it. Amen. We must stay with what God is saying to us. Watch out not to fall in the snares of the enemy. And then the one that I think is very important, don't be ill-informed. My brothers and sisters, information brings deliverance. If you handle it through the Holy Spirit. Amen. It brings deliverance to a corrupt mind. If your mind is always tending to believe everything that's just in the newspapers, you can get corrupted. But say, Lord, I want to be informed, but show me what I can do 
with this information? What do you want me to do about the information? Amen. Now, the next thing that's very important, once we are in Jesus, and I'm moving fast tonight, this is such a nice sketch to me. What I am in him. You know, and yellow is like an egg yolk. It's such a place of birth, and I like eggs, and I like the egg yolk. So in this position, I'm getting reshaped. Are you with me? You get reconstructed. God changes you totally, and this is what we must be as, as, as researchers. We get a reconfiguration. You look at facts, but you will not let the facts, the facts affect you. You will affect the facts. Amen. By listening to what the Lord, Holy Spirit is saying to you. And through that, you are resurrected. You're always on top and not at the bottom. Amen. So reshaped, reconstructed, reconfigured, and then you are resurrected. What do you want to do with that? To do the will of the Father. Amen. Then when we go on to the next, this is well-known scriptures that you all know. What is our position with uh, uh, regard to the demonic realm? You can read that all in your notes. We are far above in him. I am in him. I, I am in him. I have. Amen. And then in Ephesians, we see that the Lord says we are all over all principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, dominions in every name that is named. And this is for you, my brother from Morocco. The name of Jesus is above the name Muhammad. Because that's what the Bible says. It's above all names. Amen. And uh, we, uh, this is an amazing uh, illustration I got once from a, a, a newspaper in London. It's Iron Maiden, the group Iron Maiden. So the young people here must always watch out to which music they're listening. Can you see that face high up in the air? So that whole group is led by this demonic face or this demonic being. So when you listen to that music, you are influenced by that being behind the music. And that's why the young people must watch out what they listen to. And I can say a lot about this, but I'm, uh, I'm just going to move. Now, so, so who are you in Christ? And this is where I'm going to stop the evening, and I'm going to take you out, let you take out your notes. And I want you to look at your notes on, so who are you in Christ? And I've written some of these down, 36 of them, but there are many more. And this, these are to help you. Tomorrow morning when you get up, you can start with number one and say, you know what, Hada? You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. You are the workmanship of God. Doesn't that speak to you? It speaks to me that I'm his workmanship. You are made ooh, the righteousness of God in him. So we are the righteousness of God also in Jesus. And the more you say it and teach your children to say it, the quicker you will believe that. And then it said you are set free from the law of sin and death in Christ Jesus. So in Jesus, I'm not under any law. Isn't that awesome? So what I want you to do now, just as a practical application, is to take three of these scripture verses, you can choose which ones, and meditate on them. Speak to yourself. What happens when you meditate? When you speak to yourself, later you start believing it. You say, oh, but it's true. You know, I am his righteousness. I'm made his righteousness in God. Father, I'm set free from the law of sin and death in the name of Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, I've brought in this teaching so that you as a researcher don't get depressed when you read certain things. Amen. That you will always, first of all, realize who you are in Christ. Your total dependency on him and to proclaim to yourself Yes, I have been sanctified in Christ Jesus. These things can't touch me anymore. I'm sanctified. I'm walking this way of holiness. Father, I made a life in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the more you speak it to yourself, the more you believe it. 
And you, I want you to, uh, you can sit just quietly in your chair, so if, some of you, if some of you want to come lie on the ground for a while, you just look at these scriptures and meditate on them and let them flow through you. Then God will do, I believe, something new in you. When I was preparing myself, really, I prepared, I've been in preparation for two and a half months. And I just said, Lord, what can I do to build my brothers and sisters up? I said, let them Look at the word and let it come into them. Let it just, Afrikaans, we've got this amazing word, dear spool. You, you, with which English word will you, when it flows through you, but dear spool, it will just go through and through you, this word, as you meditate on it. So I'm giving you a few minutes to do that, and then we'll bring this first teaching to an end. Amen. <laughs>